political cartoons, and back to Constitution's comments. My channel launched on September 5th, 2011, during the Occupy Wall Street movement. And I wanted to be part of that movement to protest the events that were widely known. In short, Wall Street was robbing the country blind. Young people demonstrated at Zuccotti Park, and they were beaten with batons, pepper sprayed, arrested, and put into jail. They had to pay big fines for exercising their constitutional rights to protest the thefts by the fascists and the elite. But nobody on Wall Street was arrested. Nobody went to jail. Nobody was fined. Nobody was even spoken to harshly about the crimes committed by the Wall Street crooks and the Federal Reserve, which passed out trillions of dollars to their families and the banks they own or control. The first cartoon depicts the injustice. We need political cartoons so we can understand what's going on in simple terms. World Bank attorney Karen Hudes is fighting a courageous battle for the people, and she thinks we can win. Digging deep, Karen uncovered the connection between 147 companies on the capital market, and she said they conspire using interlocking directors, and the more we learn about this, the angrier the public will become. Karen Hudes was unfairly fired at the World Bank. As an attorney, she had a duty to make sure things were legitimate, and she found corruption, reported it, and they relieved her of her duty. You can also secede and try to break up the power block, but they are deeply entrenched. And the first step is for everyone to know about them. And that means you who do know must spread the truth any way you can. Join a social network, acquire followers, and put out a message of truth each day to at least 10 other people, and maybe we have a chance. The enemy has their propaganda devices in place, and they control everything. So if you think this fight can be won without your participation, just look at the shackles on your ankles and tell me how free you are to move about. Demon trillions of dollars are stolen by the Wall Street firms like Goldman Sachs, and the Fed passes out $300 billion per month, according to Dr. Jim Willie, whose website is goldenjackass.com. That's $1 trillion every quarter, and where does this money go? It's handed to banks, not students. To stimulate the economy, they could have given it to starving students who can't find a job and are strapped with debt from student loans. But instead, they handed it to banks, and they didn't need it. So they put it into the stock market to receive dividends. The stock market rallied, and the bubble just got bigger. How is this a stimulus? It makes the bubble bigger, doesn't it? It sounds more like a theft to me. What about we the people? When do we get a bailout, a helping hand? These students who have loans can't even find a job. They enter the job market and there is a mountain of debt and no jobs. When the government creates jobs, they are TSA jobs, and we get more fingers up our asses. They are CIA jobs and we have an even larger dope peddling narcotics enterprise, and the USA is getting a reputation around the world as the biggest drug peddler. So do the people get some of that drug money? Jim Willie says the Bush crime family makes $5 trillion annually off heroin and cocaine, and that makes Al Capone look like a bowling buddy. Money is created out of thin air to lend on homes and to students, but when the people can't pay, they find they are chained, as you see in this image. The Fed crashes the economy, takes all the homes, enslaves students who can't pay back their student loans, and you don't hear the people screaming too much because the Nazi nightly news network isn't telling you what's really happening in the world. They own the media as well. You will hear only what you need to hear, and at this time, it's all propaganda. You can't escape any more than this student on a leash can escape. You're jobless, penniless, and you owe your soul to the company store, as always. It's a slavery system just like the Middle Ages. And if you ask me, we are still in the Middle Ages. We have the kings, the queens, and the nobility. They are the high professions, those in Congress and the Supreme Court. And then you have the serfs who work the land and get barely enough to survive while those at the top enjoy the good life from wealth confiscated through high taxes and high prices from the monopolies they created on vital necessities. Bitcoin comes along with promise to take away some of that power, and there is a crackdown on the people who trade in it. Some are charged with money laundering, while HSBC gets caught and walks away scot-free, and nobody goes to jail. The jails should be full of the Wall Street crooks and those in the nobility, but instead they are full of poor people who are much more likely to go to jail. The prison system makes money for those who supply them, and so you're going to see world records of incarceration rates. America has more people in prison per capita than any country in the world. And we used to say that the communist countries put their dissidents into jail. Who is pointing the finger at whom? It's time for the people to know the truth, isn't it? 70% of the people in America are taking some form of prescription drug. That's another form of slavery, in case you didn't know. And this fact has to be disseminated so that everyone knows about Big Pharma and the drugged out society. Next cartoon, please. Politicians run for office telling you whatever you want to hear. It doesn't matter because your vote doesn't count. What is promised like a real investigation of 9-11 or to end all the wars is soon forgotten once the foreign-born Kenyan is installed by the fascists to take down America by eroding the rights of the people under the Constitution. Nobody could have done it better. He did as he was instructed and the American empire is falling. The people never get what's promised and they never learn. All the cameras are on us and they should be on the crooks in government and those who operate behind the scenes. They are the ones who should be watched and do the people complain? No. 
You don't hear a peep from the majority of Americans who are so busy trying to survive that they don't have time to catch up on what's really going on. They feel powerless and they don't understand the power that they have. We have the power of truth. We need to spread it. But if we don't know that 19 Arabs with box cutters didn't board any planes in 2001, then how can we spread it? Not one Arab name on all four passenger lists. And do the Americans know this? Hell no. Most are getting a clue, but many still believe the lies told by those who own our government. Here is Uncle Sam wearing the red, white, and blue hat. So fat that he can't see the scale of spending. And he is asking Obama what the scale says. Obama is sitting on a huge budget so thick that he's using it as a chair. And it is propping him up. He tells the big, fat, bloated Uncle Sam that it's time for dinner. In other words, eat more because you're not fat enough. Watch closely at the metaphors in this image. Uncle Sam is who you pay your income taxes to, right? Wrong. Uncle Sam can't be both the IRS mafia and your government. You've been duped. You don't pay taxes to our government. You pay them to a private corporation that forwards your tax dollars, some $600 billion annually, up the food chain to the all-seeing eye at the top of the pyramid. Those tax dollars make one stop at the British crown, where 40% is skimmed off, and the rest, some $360 billion annually, goes off to the Vatican Jesuits. What do they do with it? They start wars, and then the U.S. gets drawn into these wars, and we are drained again. We are supporting an IRS mafia, which does not spend a single cent on infrastructure in the United States, and our money goes to Europe, where it is divided. The crown takes a 40% cut because we never really gained independence from them, as you were taught in school. And 60% goes to Jesuits at the Vatican so they can start a war to kill those who don't believe in God the same way as the Jesuits do. The only God that the Jesuits believe in is money. That is their God. I did a video about the Jesuits and it has received many views. Use YouTube to type in who are the Jesuits to watch that video. They talk about smashing the heads of babies against the wall in that video and I got sick. The Pope is a Jesuit, and his crimes back in Argentina should be known by all, so you can see what he did. He covered up crimes against defenseless children, and I see the Catholic Church as organized crime. And I think they should be charged under the RICO Act. Racketeering charges are in order. And the Catholic Church should pay huge fines for their role in the crimes as well as the cover-ups. The Pope is guilty, and he should be arrested when he comes to America. Next cartoon, please. Here is the Greek Marathon. A Greek runner is carrying the burden of European banks on his shoulders. Do you know what I read about the Greek crisis? I read that Goldman Sachs falsified documents and thereby hid the debt of the Greeks, and this enabled them to enter the EU, European Union. Investors got screwed, and is Goldman going to be arrested and charged with crimes for falsifying documents? Not any more than HSBC is going to be prosecuted for laundering money. This is one big happy crime family, and it's worldwide. It affects everyone on the planet, and if we don't work toward reducing their power, they will be ruthless in taking everything you and I have. We will be penniless on the continent that our forefathers conquered. Next cartoon, please. Here you see an empty bottle of wine with a dollar sign and a pyramid of wine glasses with the top glasses full and all the rest empty. The caption says trickle-down economics. Only those at the top get to taste the wine of money and the rest have empty glasses. If we don't do something like secede, there will be fewer and fewer full glasses at the top and more and more empty glasses at the bottom. A handful of people have decided to take it all and leave the rest with nothing. They have all the laws in place to serve them. Regulations that should be there to protect us are there only to eliminate competition and serve them. How much will the people take? They will be homeless, arrested for being homeless, sent to the FEMA camps, and disposed of. Since the enemy owns the media, the Nazi Nightly News Network will not be reporting anything that goes on in the FEMA camps or the crematories. Adolf Hitler looks on from the other side, smiling at the progress that has been made in the Nazi regime. Let's move to the next cartoon. We see a boat that is sinking. It is likely the EU, because all the names of the riders are European nations. We have somebody underwater, and that could be Greece. Spain has let go of the poor guy, and France is holding Spain's hand, and also the hand of the UK, which is in a much better position on this sinking boat. The UK guy is calling out to Germany, Hey, give me your hand! Germany keeps his hands in his pocket, in the highest position on the sinking boat, and has a life preserver in hand. Above the heads of each in the cartoon, you see a downward movement, except in the case of Germany. Germany is rising in the water, sort of like the stern of the Titanic just before it sank, but at least Germany has a life preserver. The only thing the others have is the hand of someone else, except the poor guy under the water, and he has nothing. No life preserver, no hand, no hope, no friends, just water up to his eyeballs. It doesn't look good for most of the EU, but Germany might survive, with the best position in the sinking boat, no hand connected to anyone, and a nice life preserver under the arm. Next cartoon, please. A fat, bald American with teeth missing and smoking a cigarette is apparently panicked by an outbreak of the Ebola virus, which killed very, very few. 
Meanwhile, there are 300,000 deaths annually due to obesity, 450,000 deaths annually due to tobacco, and 88,000 deaths per year due to alcohol. We see burgers, fries, and a large soft drink, all typical of the fast food restaurants. This is funny and true. Thank you for what you do. We enjoyed laughing at the cartoon you drew. Next cartoon. When Obamacare came out, 70% of us did not want it, but that didn't stop them from ramming it down our throats anyway. After the bill passed, 85% of us didn't want it, and they were not deterred. We must be close to 100% opposing mandatory health insurance imposed upon us by the ruling class who write the laws and oddly those laws favor them and make a lot of money for them but cost us far, far more than anyone anticipated. In this one, a cheerful Obama is carrying 9 or 10 buckets labeled AIG, insurance, autos, banks, housing, etc. And he's walking up to the milk cow. The cow bell has on it U.S. Treasury. Obama's greeting, good morning sunshine, is met with a stressed out look. The U.S. Treasury cow is obviously tapped out and can't provide much milk for Obama despite his cheerful demeanor. Next cartoon, please. We have Obama and the head of the Department of the Treasury with his feet up on the desk. And Obama asks, do we have a spending problem, Jack? Jack gives the typical out of touch nonsense reply. Our spending won't be added to the debt. This shows how out of touch the world of politics is. And that means it's all going to end very soon. Because when those in control are not sensible, the house of cards comes down with a wind of any size. They are out of touch with the people. Obama here expects Jack to fix it all. And what does crooked Jack say? Our spending won't be added to the debt. They can't do the math. They can't operate on a budget. They don't know how to create jobs. They can't lead. The only thing they can do is pretend, lie, and cover up. And that only works for a while because the people are not stupid. Eventually, they figure it out. Eventually, there is a collapse when the load builds to the point that the supports give way. We are very close to that right now. Unfair and antiquated political system. I selected these cartoons thinking it would be fun, but I'm so angry and disgusted about where America is today that I don't want to say another word about these cartoons or what the artist was trying to convey. So I'm just going to show the rest to you and leave the interpretation to you. We the people should be in control and we aren't even involved in any of the legislation anymore. The only purpose we serve is that of oxen pulling their wagon and I'm really sick of it. I don't want to be part of anything that they are involved in. Secession is the only hope for change without spilling our own blood. They are not worth our blood. We need to tell this parasitic infestation to get out. We don't want you anymore. You're fired, and the sooner we part ways, the better off we're going to be. Send the link to this video to 10 of your friends because I have noticed that YouTube and Google are cooperating with the dictatorship and allowing internet censoring to take place. Microsoft 10 is another tool for the dictatorship, and if Microsoft helps the dictators become victorious over the people, all Microsoft employees will live in tyranny. Their families and friends will live in a totalitarian dictatorship, and I wonder what is in the heads of those at Microsoft, Google, and YouTube. Are they aware of the undeclared war against the people? Do they know that there are at least 60 fronts in this war? What are they thinking, that somehow they are going to remain free while the rest of us are controlled, robbed, and beaten down by a despotic government that was not even elected? Are they aware that we have a puppet, not a real president? Are they aware that he wasn't even born in the USA? And to the people of the world, I say that peace and prosperity are just around the corner, but only if we defeat those who hold power over the people, and only if we act by speaking out in protest of their actions. You have a job to do, and your own life depends on what you do today. If you can't send out an email to 10, then post on blogs 10 times a day. Copy a good video and set up a channel on YouTube. Post that video and help us get the word out. My videos are now reaching over 500 people a day and I started out hoping to reach just 10 people a day. So you can do 50 times better if you try. Use my videos, I don't mind. There are no copyrights on my work. My job is the same as yours to get the word out. Thanks for watching. Español, English, Deutsch. Normalmente produzco solo videos en inglés y español. Normally I produce only videos en English and Spanish. Normalerweise produciré ich nur videos en English and Spanish. Pero hoy voy a hacer otra excepción y traducirlo también en alemán. But today I make another exception and translate it into German too. Aber heute werde ich nochmal eine Ausnahme machen und es auch in Deutsch übersetzen. 
ya algunas semanas tengo escrito en mi lista de tareas por hacer de traducir el video hashtag BTC4. Now already some weeks ago I have written on my to-do list to translate the video BTC4, hashtag BTC4. Schon seit ein paar Wochen habe ich äh, auf meiner To-Do-Liste geschrieben, ähm, den Video BTC4 in Deutsch zu übersetzen. Estoy segura que esta idea puede ayudar a mucha gente económicamente. I'm sure that this can help many people economically. Ich bin sicher, dass diese Idee vielen Leuten äh, finanziell helfen kann. Y da motivación para aprender Bitcoin. And give motivation to learn about Bitcoin. Und motivation geben, um über Bitcoin zu lernen. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im moment ist der Preis von Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015 would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15th, 2015. Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015. He publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. On March 27th of 2015, um, I published my for the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanos Enigma explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanos Enigma den ersten, den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die Idee besteht hauptsächlich in folgenden. folgendem. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper, at least 10 or better 100. Bitcoin adressen in Papier ausdrucken, um, minimum 10 or besser gleich 100. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y 
la próxima vez cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero and the next time you see again a person begging for money on the street und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas. And for your friends, of course. Und für deine Freunde natürlich. O tal vez eh, de probina en un restaurante. Or maybe a tip in a restaurant. Oder trinkgeld im restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin, de direcciones de Bitcoin. When you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen druckt, auch die, äh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin-Adress-Schlüsseln, ähm, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de... Abril 2015, escribir la fecha, más plus cuatro años, uh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015. Plus, plus four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin, eh, en estos cuatro años yo lo vuelvo a tener, tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in this um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, schau, das ist der private Schlüssel. Ähm, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin-Schlüssel. Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. En mi video antiguo he explicado eh, cómo he tomado la decisión de los cuatro años. In my old video I explained how I made the decision for the four years. In meinem original video habe ich erklärt, wie ich zu 
die Entscheidung getroffen habe äh, mit den vier Jahren. A continuación voy a pegar este video. Now later I will paste this video. Im Anschluss werde ich diesen Video ankleben. In this moment, the price of Bitcoin is very economic. Uh, at the moment, the price of Bitcoin is very cheap. But almost everyone the world has very little money to invest. But almost everybody has a very little money to invest. Debería decir que esta idea me vino hoy especialmente cuando vi otra vez una chica ahí pidiendo dinero por la calle. Actually, I must say first this idea today I got especially when I saw again um, one girl begging for money in the streets. Me gustaría ayudar, pero yo tampoco me sobra mucho el dinero. I would really like to help everybody, but I, I don't have either too much money. And así que me vino la siguiente idea. So I got the following idea. It's, uh, it's más bien un juego. Uh, it's a rather a game. Um, lo que es muy importante elegir un monedero de Bitcoin que solo tú mismo misma, tienes la llave privada. What is very important to choose um, Bitcoin wallet a company which you only possess the private key. For example, uh, blockchain.info. Por ejemplo, la empresa blockchain.info. Luego, imprimir en papel um, la llave privada y también guardarlo tú mismo. Then to print in paper the private key and uh, of course save for, for yourself that private key. Bueno, ya estamos imprimiendo, imprime por lo menos 10. So now we are already printing, so at least print 10 directions, 10 direcciones. Luego pones algo de Bitcoin, una cantidad, lo que, lo que te da la gana en esta dirección. Then you put some Bitcoin, uh, the amount, whatever you want in, that, in these directions. Y la próxima vez que sales de casa ya tienes algo que dar a los que están ahí pidiendo por la calle. And the next time you go out of the house, you have already something to give for these people who are begging on the streets. Y por ejemplo, y claro, para tus amigos, amigas, and for your friends, of course. Eso da motivación a la gente para aprender Bitcoin y uh, this gives motivation for the people to learn about Bitcoin. Y la parte del juego consiste en lo siguiente. And the game part uh, consists in the following. Explicas a la gente, mira, esta es la cl clave privada, que es la clave secreta. 
you explain to the people, look, this is the private key, which must be secret. And uh, you have it and uh, me and uh, explicas. Esa persona y yo mismo la tiene. Y antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié un poco de idea de hasta cuatro años. First I thought of five years, but then I changed uh, my opinion to four years. Later explain. Después lo expli explico por qué. Les dices, mira, tienes cuatro años para poner esta cantidad de Bitcoin a otra dirección. Si no lo, lo has quitado después de cuatro años, yo lo quito. So you explain them, you have four years to take this Bitcoin out of this direction, of this secret uh, key direction. If uh, you don't do it, uh, I do it after these four years. So you lose this. That's the, this part of the game. It's uh, la parte del juego. He creado este hashtag uh, BTC4 para hacerlo un poco popular. I created this hashtag BTC4 to make it a little popular. Antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié a cuatro porque te has dado cuenta que en los Simpson la gente tiene cuatro dedos. Y Solo do, Dios tiene cinco dedos. Um, first, I thought of five years, but then I changed my mind to four years. Um, did you notice that in The Simpsons, people have four fingers and only God has five fingers. Uh, I'll show some pictures. Voy a enseñar algunas imágenes de los Simpsons. De los manos y dedos de Simpsons. Some pictures of the hands and fingers of Simpsons. Uh, pero antes quiero recordar que um, es muy probable que en también cuatro o cinco en los próximos años el valor de Bitcoin puede subir mucho. Just want to remember before that uh, the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin can rise very much in these next years. Así que si solo pones una cantidad pequeña más tarde, Puede ser de gran ayuda. Even if you just put a little small amount later, it can be big help. Uh, no solo para... Bueno, es un juego. <laughs> si la persona lo quita antes de cuatro años, para, es para esta persona. Si no, es para ti. Si te recuerdas y guardas bien la llave privada. So uh, it's, this is the game part, if uh, the, the person takes the money out, it's for that person, but if they forget it after these four years, you can take it out, and it can be really... <laughs> bueno, imprimir también la llave pública y la llave privada, y si por ejemplo, okay, first translate. Print not just the private key, but on also the public key. Así que si por ejemplo explicas a la gente. Mira, si alguna persona quiere enviarte Bitcoin, pero tú no tienes ninguna dirección, así que puedes dar este, esta llave pública a la persona. Mira, muy bien, la llave pública, no la llave secreta. 
das a esa persona o cualquier persona y te pueden enviar un Bitcoin a esa dirección. So, remember, uh, the public key you can give to anybody and if somebody wants to send you some Bitcoin and, you, and this person doesn't have, have any, so you have already this public address where they can send you Bitcoin.